Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we have a review of episode 880, Sabo Goes Into Action. All the captains of the Revolutionary Army appear. And here we have by far the best episode of the Reverie arc thus far. From a pacing perspective, it was quite solid. There were very few parts where I felt like things were being purposely stretched out, and it's because the filler material used here more often than not actually contributed to building the world, which I find to be quite rare in the One Piece anime. So for example, all of the piratey stuff in the beginning, pillaging the town, so on and so forth, look, it's all unnecessary to tell the story, but it does help show us a bit more about this random island that we're supposed to care about as well as its people. Especially since these island folk really do become the prime focus of the episode by the end, and thanks to the powers of a certain Bello Betty, but we'll get to her later. So yeah, spending a bit more time with them and their plight was a fine use of padding. The only exception I'll say is that I wasn't quite sold on the moment where Peachbeard was just so intent on stealing Moda's milk. That whole exchange wasn't in the manga at all, and I think it kind of detracted from Moda's moment of defeating Peachbeard because she's just yelling about milk, instead of, you know, the fact that her entire town was being ravaged and destroyed by pirates. Actually, before we continue, anime only fans, this milk chick will probably seem like a completely random addition to the series, but her name name is Moda and she actually has quite a rich history in the manga, having made her first appearance all the way back in chapter 278, or more accurately on the cover of that chapter, as she was heavily involved in Ace's cover story, focusing on his hunt for Blackbeard. Basically, Moda saves Ace from a river, and then she convinces him to infiltrate a marine base and deliver a letter to their commander, asking if he wanted to buy some of her milk, which he eventually does, and then Moda is reunited with her parents and it's a very cute and quirky story. So yeah, just bear in mind that this girl actually has quite a close connection to Ace. As for the other dude bra, Peachbeard kind of disappointed me, mostly in terms of his color scheme. It's just so bland. And the one form of color he does sport is so desaturated that it makes me wonder why he bothers to have it at all. If it weren't for the pastel pink facial hair, this guy would just seem like another background character, which is a shame because I really liked him when I read this part of the manga. To me, he was a bit more comical and had an element of flair about him, which likewise I don't think was quite reflected in his vocal performance here either. A band of characters who I certainly was not disappointed with though are our team of revolutionary captains. I've been looking forward to seeing these guys animate for about a year now, and they were pretty damn cool. All of Molly's gags landed pretty well, Karasu's crow animation was fun to watch, and Bella Betty's voice fits perfectly. The only one I'm a bit meh about is Lindbergh, and to be fair, I was meh about him in the chapter as well, because his abilities intrigue me the least. Back to Betty for a second though, you can certainly tell that the animator spent uh, quite a bit of time perfecting any frames involving her, or more accurately, perfecting her within more standardly drawn frames, as she definitely pops out in more ways than one. But it was quite nice to see her abilities at work, as ever since this devil fruit was introduced, Introduced, I've immediately thought of it as one of the most incredibly dangerous powers in existence. I mean, not so much in the hands of Bella Betty, but in the possession of a talented dictator type, it could result in a world war with a simple wave of a flag. Now, something I was much less convinced about in this episode was when we cut to the straw hats on the sunny. Now, I'm sure you could all tell this was filler because it contributed very little, pretty much nothing to anything, and it featured a bunch of long lingering shots, like this one of Sanji smoking and leaving his mouth open like a derp for what seems like an eternity. The thing that annoys me most though is when Luffy asked Nami to directly if there's anything about the Revolutionary Army in the newspaper. And this really is just a little thing, but it feels very out of character for Luffy to do something like that, or you know, at least ask about the Revolutionary Army specifically. And yeah, I know it appears to make some sort of sense because of Sabo, Ivankov, and anyone else that Luffy knows, but Luffy isn't the kind of guy to actively seek out that sort of information. He just sort of goes on his own adventures and leaves everyone else to do theirs. So it was a bit jarring to have him go, Oh, Nami, is there anything about the Revolutionary Army? It was, yeah, it was just a bit wrong. And I guess what I'm getting at is that if they wanted this section, it probably could have been done a bit smoother. I personally don't feel the need for the Straw Hats to have appeared at all in this episode. This could have just as easily been achieved by having a conversation between two of the townsfolk being invaded by Peachbeard, saying something along the lines of, you know, who are those guys? What's the Revolutionary Army? And then you could have gone into that detailed explanatory section, which was quite cool, actually. I didn't mind that because there was some very nice artwork on display. But of course, without the Straw Hats, you have less of an excuse to include all of the fillerish Sabo stuff. I say less because once again, you could have done it without the pointless scene on the sunny. I mean, for example, you could just go to the end of the filler bit on Momo Iro Island where we see Sabo lying down and take it from there. In fact, it might even have been more effective because it's quite nice to see that shot of him lying on the ground and having his face masked by the newspaper and then revealed. So it would have been cool if that was the first we saw of him and then gone into some flashbacky crap. But instead that shot of him had minimal dramatic value because we'd just come from seeing so much of him already. So there was no point in having him hidden and there was 
no power in having him revealed. In any case, that is a small criticism in the grand scheme of things. By and large, this episode was quite satisfying. The bits of filler that were introduced either actively contributed to the scenes or were so short that they didn't have the chance to completely break the pacing. The style quality of the episode was definitely the art though. It's actually incredible comparing this episode to last week's and I know that's not a high bar at all, but nothing this week really felt off model. Even the background characters were on point, even with the odd shot of derpy Sanji and a very, very confused looking dragon. Sadly, next week looks heavily flashback based with lots of Impel Down and Marineford stuff coming into it. If I had to guess, I'd say that they are going to split chapter 905 up into two episodes, the same as what they did with 903. And I say that because the new material I did see in the preview all comes from one particular scene in the chapter and the rest either looks like filler or flashback. It's not very promising at all. And it saddens me greatly because once again, chapter 905 is a damn solid piece of storytelling. Every chapter of the Reverie arc is, so it's painful to see them chopped up like this. But my thoughts on previous weeks and next week are independent of this episode. This week was solid, and I'm really glad that at least one of these chapters was adapted decently. But that pretty much does it for episode 880. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of your amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items, with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenanigans retakes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the episode. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.